Star Wars was intended to express certain philosophical ideas which George Lucas deliberately wanted to bring into a modern form, to which he was inspired by his mentor, the real Obi-Wan Kenobi. I want to introduce you to the mythological wisdom by which Star Wars was inspired and on which it is based. What is the deeper meaning of the Star Wars saga? It touches something very deep inside of many Star Wars fans. There's something almost mystical and mythological about it. It feels as if it was based upon a story of universal truths. But why does it feel like that? Because it actually is. Not one specific story but on the story of stories, which is the essence of all stories, legends and myths of humankind, the core myths of all mythologies. There are stories about what happened. It's true. All of it. But what is the story of stories, the score myths? To understand this, let us first look at the real origin of Star Wars. Let us listen to George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars himself. Well, when I did Star Wars, I consciously set about to recreate myths and the, and the classic mythological uh, motifs. Uh, and I wanted to use those motifs to deal with issues that existed today. I'm, I'm telling an old myth in a new way. I'm just taking the, 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 the core myth and I'm localizing it. This core myth is also known as the hero's journey and it's nothing less than the essence of human wisdom that gives us, if we look deeply and with a clear mind, nothing less than the answers and solutions to the most fundamental questions of human existence and life itself. Questions about our place in the world, our purpose and mission in life and about our contribution to the world. Myths help you to have your own hero's journey, find your individuality, find your place in the world, but hopefully remind you that you're part of a whole and that you must also uh, be part of the community and, and think of the welfare of the community above the welfare of yourself. And I've tried to take the ideas that seem to cut across the most cultures uh, because I'm fascinated by that and I think that's one of the things that um, I really um, got from Joe Campbell was that what's what he was trying to do is find the common threads through the various mythology through the the religions the man he speaks about is Joseph Campbell who researched all the great stories and myths of humankind and discovered the core myths of all myths which is also known as the hero's journey Campbell was perhaps in many ways to Lucas what Kenobi was to Luke there is a certain typical hero sequence of actions um, which can be detected in stories from all over the world and from many, many periods of history. And uh, I think it's uh, essentially, you might say, the one deed done by many, many different people. I mean, even in, in uh, popular novel writing, you see, these, the main character is a hero or a heroine. That is to say, someone who has found or achieved or done something beyond the normal range of uh, achievement and experience. A hero properly is someone who has given his life to something bigger than himself or other than himself. It's a fundamental experience that everyone has to undergo. And that is the basic motif of the hero journey. Leaving one condition, finding the source of life to bring you forth in a uh, richer or more mature or other condition. So the hero's journey is essentially the master plan or sequence of actions needed to achieve something beyond the ordinary.
but even more. It is also a fundamental experience everybody has to undergo in order to achieve anything worthwhile in life. I'm sure some people might think mythology and philosophical concepts are of no real use or value. They do perhaps think they've already seen a lot of this world and perhaps they've seen a lot of strange stuff but they've never seen anything to make them believe this one all-encompassing myth that can explain everything about life. To them there's no mythological concept that offers the keys to our destiny. <laughs> Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side. You don't believe in the Force, do you? Kid, I've flown from one side of this galaxy to the other. I've seen a lot of strange stuff, but I've never seen anything to make me believe there's one all-powerful force controlling everything. There's no mystical energy field that controls my destiny. It's all a lot of simple tricks and nonsense. If you think that we should not waste our lives living in a fantasy world, you're not alone. The influence of Star Wars on our culture is in many ways like the Force itself. It has a light side and a dark side. Sir Alec Guinness, the actor who played Obi-Wan Kenobi, expressed concerns that Star Wars might cause people to live in a fantasy world. Twenty years ago, when the film was first shown, it had a freshness, also a sense of moral good and fun. Then I began to be uneasy at the influence it might be having. The bad penny first dropped in San Francisco when a sweet-faced boy of 12 told me proudly that he had seen Star Wars over a hundred times. His elegant mother nodded with approval. Looking into the boy's eyes, I thought I detected little star shells of madness beginning to form, and I guessed that one day they would explode. I'd love you to do something for me, I said. Or well, anything, anything, the boy said rapturously. You won't like what I'm going to ask you to do. Anything, sir, anything. Well, do you think you could promise never to see Star Wars again? He burst into tears. His mother drew herself up to an immense height. What a dreadful thing to say to a child, she barked, and dragged the poor kid away. Maybe she was right. But I just hope the lad, now in his thirties, is not living in a fantasy world of second-hand childish banalities. To misinterpret the mythological realm and mistake the metaphorical description for real in a literal sense and thus living in a fantasy world is a potential problem of all mythologies. Your work in mythology has has liberated my faith from the cultural prisons to which it had been sentenced. It liberated my own. I know it's going to do it with everybody who really gets the message. Every mythology, every religion is true in this sense. It is true as metaphorical of the human and cosmic mystery. But when it gets stuck to the metaphor, then you're in trouble. Given what you know about human beings, is it conceivable to you that there is a point of wisdom beyond the conflicts of, of truth and illusion by which our lives can be put back together again, that we sure. can develop new models? It's in the religions. All religions are true for their time. If you can find what the truth is and separate it from the temporal inflection, just bring your same old religion into a new set of metaphors and you've got it. Do you see some new metaphors emerging in the modern medium for the old universal truths that you've talked about, the old story? Well, uh, I think that the, uh, the Star Wars is, is, a, is a valid mythological perspective. Despite the concerns of running away from life and living in a fantasy reality, Star Wars is actually a modern mythological metaphor about how to live a fulfilled, meaningful and blissful life in the real world. How to live a human lifetime under any circumstances. The myth can tell you that. So let us explore the true deeper mythological meaning hidden in the hero's journey of Star Wars. In the next video we will begin 
with the general setting of the Star Wars universe and we will discover the true meaning of the concept of the Force. George Lucas has often emphasized that we need to work together as a community and think of the welfare of the community in order to make this world a better place. If you have enjoyed this video and if you want to help us and contribute to a world in which the ideals of Star Wars are valued, please like this video, subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. May the Force be with you.